Hey there guys, welcome to this all new intro tutorial series where we're going to be taking a look at one of my intros and we're just going to break it down from start to finish and so hopefully you guys will learn a lot of stuff and find out some new techniques and uh, it should be a lot of fun. So today let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be creating. So let's get into it in part one we're going to be setting up our text and maybe some quick writing so first of all if we hit Control or command d let's quickly set up the project and under the frame for the second we just ch change that from 30 to 25 is what i normally work in cool so let's go ahead and grab some text we'll go to MoGraph, mo text and for our text let's actually just use my name but you can use anything you want and we're going to choose a nice font here um, let's go for Taperman and we'll align it to the middle so we've got that looking nice there and we want to set up some different layers here so on our first layer we can actually just rename this to uh, edge and under our caps we're going to set the start to just none and you'll see that's just going to get rid of the whole front face of our text there and actually if we turn on our lines you can probably see that a little bit better and in fact, let's go ahead and change the start to just fill it. And you'll see there, just kind of fill it in out, but leaving no face on the front. Cool, so let's also go to our object. We're just gonna space it out a little bit. Now, if we click our there, hit Control Command, hold it down and click and drag, we can create a copy and we'll call this uh, fill. And under our caps, let's change this to a fill it cap. And you'll see that's put the face back on our text. So with this layer, we can actually constrain it, and you'll see we're kind of getting like a duplicate now. And we can just play around with the size here, and on our edge, actually let's just scale this down a little bit, just so we're getting something like this. And for our fill, we'll go to our coordinates, and let's actually just drop it back in Z, just to get a bit of depth in there. As you can see like that, maybe to about 5. It might be quite hard to see at the minute, but if we quickly render that out, we're getting kind of a nice bevel here. And if we turn on our ambient occlusion and quickly render that out. Cool. So let's add a, another one. Hit Control Command, hold it down, click and drag. And we'll just call this Face. And actually what we can do with this one is under our caps, so let's increase the radius. And you'll see that's just going to bring it out like that and it's looking really nice around here. And what we can do with this is go back to our coordinates and actually drag it forward a little bit more. Just so we're getting some really cool bevels going on and our fill. Let's actually drag that forward a little bit there. Just so we're getting these different layers going on between our text. And let's try render that out, see what it's looking like. Okay, cool, that's looking nice. Not bad. Uh, and you know what, let's add one more. Let's just improvise here. And we'll call this outline. And under our object, we're just gonna scale the depth down to like maybe 10 and we'll push it back a little bit under our caps. We'll turn off the constraint. So you see it's gonna stick out the sides there. And we can just scale the radius down just a little bit so you see we're getting this sort of highlight here and we'll kind of move it into the middle maybe five is a bit too much, we'll do three and make sure you just move it on the Z position cool so now we're getting some really nice cool chunky bulky looking text uh, we'll just render this out here, see what we're getting. Cool, so that's looking really quite nice and heavy, I like that. Obviously you don't have to do as many, but we're going for a nice sort of cinematic, heavy industrial kind of text look. 
let's go ahead and add some quick lighting. We'll just grab a Omni light. And under the details tab, let's go under the fall off and change it to an inverse square. And we can just position this a little bit nicer, maybe something over here. And we'll bring in the radius a little bit. Bring that down. And again, let's add another one. Maybe shove it over here. Push it back a little bit. Something like that. And let's actually just turn off our grid because we don't need that for now. But cool, this is how our text is looking so far. It's pretty quick, pretty simple to do. And actually, let's go to our render settings. Let's quickly set up our scene. So under the output tab, let's do 1920 by 1080. Whoops, 1080 there. Resolution 72, frame rate 25, or make sure to match it whatever you set this to. And again, bring this up with Control Command D. Our frame range, we'll leave that on all frames for now. And our ambient occlusion, let's, uh, let's turn off Apply to Project, and we'll turn on our multipass. And under the multipass tab, let's add back in that ambient occlusion there. So now it's not rendering in the scene because we've turned this off. And in fact, it will render it separately into a multipath. Uh, our options, we can set this maybe to six, a reflection three, uh, shadow depth will do six as well. Just so it's hopefully gonna render a little bit quicker. We'll render that out now, there you go. Cool. Let's add some quick subtext. And we'll do under the object, let's do uh, my first name. And we can choose a nice simpler font there. Maybe scale this down, set this to middle. And actually, you can come back out with the middle mouse button and we can go to the front view here. And you can just align that up a little bit nicer. Let's scroll down, push this out. And the depth, maybe let's bring that down to about 10. Render out, see what we're getting. Cool, that's not looking not looking too bad there. Let's actually zoom in here. Nice. Cool. So that's some very quick text setup. So in part two we're gonna be looking at doing some more detailed texturing and lighting. And uh, and then finally part three we'll do some animation rendering out. And uh, maybe part four we'll do some post-production as well. So that's it for part one and I'll see you in part two. Bye guys.